Well, hi there, and welcome on another episode of TypeScript Design Patterns. And in this episode, we will be discussing the chain of responsibility pattern. When we look at the definition, it states that it avoids coupling the sender of a request to its receiver by giving more than one object a chance to handle the, handle the request. So you chain the receiving objects and pass the request along the chain until an object handles it and uh, until an object handles it might also include uh, until all objects have handled it and where you see this pattern a lot is for example with uh, events and or um, HTTP modules for example in ASP.NET so we have several modules and as soon as a request comes in at IIS all these modules will be passed the request and these uh, modules can decide to pass the request along or just to handle the request completely and uh, uh, without invoking the uh, following uh, modules so let's say for example the, the static file request uh, we'll just return a file where a, for example, in SharePoint, a uh, authentication uh, module, uh, when a user uh, enters the request, it will be authenticated by, for example, IIS, when you use Windows authentication, or some uh, other identity provider. And then the authentication model verifies the uh, request that comes in if it contains a, a Windows user or a uh, token a uh, claim from another identity provider and with that it will create a SharePoint user add that SharePoint user to the request and after it has done that it will call succeeding modules to indeed handle the, the rest of the request so uh, that's where you see the chain of responsibility pattern a lot when we look at the UML class diagram, we see that we have a client and a client calls a handler, uh, the handle request method, but the handler itself will call multiple concrete handlers to actually execute this request method. Um, so I created an example, so let's head over to Visual Studio. When we look at Visual Studio, I have an example over here. In this example, we are going to validate some string input. So what I first did, I created an event, an iCancelable event uh, interface, which has two methods, a add method and a remove method. Um, besides that, we have a cancelable event arc, which has a single property cancel, which is of type boolean. We then create a class cancelable event, which uh, implements iCancelable event type T, where T is an iCancelable uh, event arc. So what this does, this cancelable event, this allows to add or remove uh, event handlers. And the event handlers, when they are called, they are passed in the event arcs, which are cancelable. So what does this mean? When the event handler gets reads the event arcs and decides that it needs to, it handles the request and pass it on, cancel will be false. If the event handler decides, okay, uh, I verified this request, but the result is not valid, it can then cancel the request. So it will cancel, uh, set cancel to true. And then this event handler will not call succeeding, uh, subsequent handlers so that's what we see right here when we raise the event it will call all event handlers and while e cancel is false it will continue to call these event handlers if cancel equals true it will not call any succeeding event a subsequent event handler so that's the cancelable event and then we have a validation event arc, which is of course uh, implements i cancelable event arc, which has a public property is valid, cancel, that's the one we need, and the result, and also a helper method for us to just lock the result. That's the validation event arc. So when we then go to the validation chain, this is actually the object that will 
contain the chain will contain the cancelable event where we can register these validators. So what we see right here, we have a private validators is new cancelable event. And we have the get validators, which returns this uh, event. And then we have, of course, the validate method. So we, we create a new validation chain. We add validators. And when we are finished with adding the validators we need, we call the validate method, which will, which will then forward this request to validate the input to these registered event handlers. That's what we have right here. So in this case, we have a string a class string validators, which is just a helper class, which contains some functions that will validate the string. So we have a null validator, which simply verifies if the value equals null. If the value equals null, the result will be string is null, and we set cancel to true. When we set cancel to true, we know that other validators, subsequent validators, will not be called. We also, of course, set the result to is valid is false. Then we have the empty validator. The empty validator is just a function which will be called inside that chain uh, where we say, okay, let's trim the result. So it's not null, but it's uh, might be empty, so an empty string. So we just trim the result and then verify if the length is not smaller than or equal to zero. If it is so, then of course this string is not valid. So we set the result to string is empty. Again, we set console to true. So subsequent event handlers or validators will not be called. And the result of course is valid is equals false. We also have a length validator, which we need to create. So this is a sort of factory method where we say, where we define that we want the string to have at, uh, at least a specific, no, at a, at a max, a specific amount of characters. So we create a length validator and within the validator, we verify that if the value, the length of the value that's passed in is larger than the max length, then we have a result, the string string value is too long. Then again, we set cancel to true and then is valid to false. So we've got a set of validators over here, string validators, which will be passed to the validation chain. Yeah, they will be added and then we call validate on the validation chain. And that's what you see in the load method. So what we have here, we have some values to validate. We have a null value, an empty string, a string uh, which contains 11 uh, items, characters in this case, although they are numeric characters. And then we also have a valid string because this will be too long. Uh, this is null, this is empty, and this is indeed valid. So we then, after we have the values that we need to validate, we create a validation chain. And to that validation chain, we add a string validator, null validator, we add the string validator, empty validator, and we add the string validators, create length validator, of 10. So like I mentioned, this one is 11 characters long, so this will indeed fail on this one. So we then, for each value to validate, so don't make the mistake of thinking that we uh, iterate through the validators, we, we uh, do not do that. We just iterate through the values to validate, and for each of these values, we create a new validation event arc with the value, and then we let the validation chain validate this value. And in the end, we output the event arcs status. So when we look at the result, let's head over to our page over here. When we look at the result, let's scroll down first. So we have the value null, and when we pass that in, of course, the first validator, this null validator, will set console is true and is valid to false. And as such, the result no no subsequent validators will be called, and the output will be string is null. When we pass in an empty string, the null validator passes fine, but then the empty validator comes in that that notifies that the string is empty, and it will then set is valid to false, console to true, and the result to string is empty. Then when we pass in the uh, this string, the one to ten. 
the null will pass, the empty will pass, and then it comes at the, at the length validated, which we created here, and that notifies that this length is longer than 10 of this string, so it sets the uh, is valid to false, the counsel is true, and then the result to the string is too long. Then with the last value, when we pass it in the null validator, it's not null. We pass it in the empty validator, it's not null. And we, then the created length validator will also pass because the valid is only five characters long. And that will be the only valid. So the val valid value, so the valid value valid is valid. And it's all done with the chain of responsibility. So we have a multiple handlers that in this case validators that can validate the input and we just call the, vali uh, the validation chain dot validate passing the event arcs and that will be the one that eventually ev uh, validates the uh, calls all validators and that's how you use the vali uh, chain of responsibility pattern.